Hi guys, well today we're going to be checking out the all new X570S Aorus Master. And so the AMD platform is receiving a refresh with previously released boards benefiting from either a minor facelift or quite a significant one in some cases. X570 is now, believe it or not, over two years old and so this provides manufacturers the opportunity to revamp their product lines. Now Master is a high-end board which was a top pick and under the new X570S badge it seeks to move things up a notch. And so there are a fair few changes and improvements compared to the original master. On offer from master are four PCI Express Gen 4 slots for super fast storage, up to 54 megahertz DDR4, a good assortment of USB connectivity including USB 3.2 by 2 as well as a redesigned 14 plus 2 phase design system with modified heat sinks. This X570S Aorus Master is positioned as a high-end board and is 380 in the US, 340 in the UK and 659 in Australia and so admittedly it's not going to be for everyone but if if you're looking to upgrade to AMD Ryzen and you want a good assortment of features then this might be worth checking out. Before we begin this video is brought to you by Gigabyte and the RX 6600 XT Gaming OC which carries the renowned Windforce 3X cooling system, a triple fan cooler which promises to offer low noise and low temps. Being a Gaming OC there's also a slight bump there in the GPU clock boost on this mid-range card and it is also designed to work with Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software. For a sleek understated design check out the Gigabyte RX 6600 XT Gaming OC. More info can be found at the link in the description. Alrighty, well here we have the X570S Master. Now right across the different assortments of master boards under different chipsets you're going to see a similar design and it sure is a nice one at that. It takes on a monochrome theme like many other boards but the attention to detail is like no other. It really is a great looking board which has a lot of appeal. The base of the board is matte black and we have black and gunmetal being used with some silver accents for the PCI Express and the memory. And of course Master comes in with some integrated RGB lighting which can be customised with the RGB Fusion. There are a total of 5 RGB headers on Master with 2 of those being addressable. Those are found at the top and the bottom of the board. Master is the standard size for a board and it conforms to that ATX form factor and that means that it's going to fit into most cases. As you would expect with this being an X570S board, the socket we're dealing with here is AMD AM4. So this can accommodate the Ryzen 5000 series of processors as well as 3000 and even 2000. Obviously to get the most out of this platform and all of its features, you're going to want to get yourself a 5000 series CPU. Now in terms of the power delivery we have a huge 14 plus 2 phase design and Master adopts 70 amp power stages and has 6 layer PCB with the 2x copper. Aorus reserves the best for their higher end boards and therefore we get premium chokes and caps as well. All of these features contribute to giving Master an uplift in the overclocking department and we managed to get an all core 4.6 gig overclock on our 5950X. Covering the VRMs we have two large heat sinks which are the Direct Touch Heat Pipe 2 and they use the Fins Array 2. Compared to the non-S version of Master we have an improved design. On the older version Gigabyte has covered most of the heat sinks in plastic. In our load testing for the VRM and the chipset, the new version here of Master did a good job. The thermal range isn't too dramatic and is well within the realms of being acceptable. Behind the top heatsink we have the CPU power which is an 8 plus 8 pin socket. That has the solid pins and metal shielding. Now in terms of the fan headers there are a total of 10 spread right across the top, the side and bottom. All of those are hybrid and 4 pin. So it's great to see such a huge amount of allocation for the fan headers. You're definitely not going to run out of them. And again for the RGB we have the 5 headers in total. Moving on to the memory we have the dual channel DDR4 support with the metal reinforcement protection and here we can slot in up to 128 gig up to 5400 MHz. And right next to the DDR4 section we have some extra features which include an onboard power button, an LED debug panel for diagnostics and a multi-key button. With that multi-key you can assign three different functions to it. You can either have it as an RGB switch, direct to BIOS switch or a safe mode switch. So that's a really neat feature to be able to take advantage of. And for the connectivity we have the two USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 header. And just to the left of that USB 3.2 Gen 2 header you can see we have an LED panel for the CPU, the DRAM, VGA and boot. Again that is for diagnostics, helps you to troubleshoot should you come into any problems. Moving on to the storage we have six SATA 3.6G ports for any SATA based devices. Then we have four M.2 slots which support the PCI Express Gen 4. You will need to be using a support 
supporting CPU, otherwise that will be Gen 3. And all of those M.2 slots feature a corresponding heatsink. Three of them use the Gigabyte Thermal Guard 2, while the uppermost slot benefits from the Thermal Guard version 3. If we take a look at the expansion area, we have the three PCI Express 4 X16s. The top slot is wired for the full 16 lanes. The second is wired for eight and the bottom is four. So if you do want to use multiple cards, the mode will drop to the slowest rate. So it is best to use the top slot for a single card use. And just AMD Crossfire is available, no Nvidia SLI. Aorus has equipped these slots to have the steel reinforcement and the extra anchor points, which gives that extra protection. The audio solution on master is over to the left of the PCI Express. It is based around the Realtek ALC 1220VB codec. And as part of this package here we get Wima caps and Nichicon fine gold caps. ESS9118 audio DAC, a TXC oscillator, and all of these items here are isolated to avoid that signal interference. And last of all, we come to the rear panel on master, and over here we get a clear CMOS button, a Q-Flash Plus button, two antenna ports for the 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6E, four USB 2 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, those are the blue, six USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, those are the red. The Type-C there is actually USB 3.2 Gen 2 to, we get an Intel 2.5 gig Ethernet and then the gold plated audio jacks with optical out. So there are a load of ports here to take advantage of and Master comes in with the Wi-Fi 6E which again is another upgrade from the original Master but it is still disappointing to see that we're still having to put up with so many USB 2 ports on this back panel. One or two would have been fine but four? Those should be substituted. So that is the new X570S Aorus Master. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of what to expect from this board. We've got to say just on the visuals alone, Master is a stunning model. And when you put it up against the original Master, you can see the, the changes which have been made. The color scheme is mostly the same, but there have been quite a few adjustments in terms of the aesthetics. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Now, as far as the features go, it gives you an excellent platform into the world of AMD Ryzen with a solid 14 digital phase design, support for up to 5400 DDR4, and a whole heap of PCI Express Gen 4. We get three expansion slots and then four M.2 slots, for storage so there won't be any shortage there on that front and it gives you the option to utilize raid there are an innumerable selection of usb ports on the back panel with a good selection of usb 3.2 gen 2 as well as a type c which gives you that usb 3.2 gen 2 by 2 the only disappointment is that we have a whole stack dedicated to the aging usb 2. the big difference with the new x570s boards is of course the omission of active cooling for the chipset and so on this and other boards the chipset uses a passive thermal design with no need for a fan, which definitely has its benefits. For those who are interested, there are a lot of little advanced features on Master, like the debug panels, customizable switch, and sensor readouts. And not to mention up to 10 hybrid fan headers, which is the most we've come across on a board. In our load testing, the VRM and the chipset climbed up by 10 to 20 degrees and still remained within the realms of being acceptable. So that just shows you how, particularly for the chipset, there is no need for a cooling fan there. Master has a strong VRM design, it allowed us to take that monitor monolithic Ryzen 9 5950X to an all-core 4.6 gig overclock requiring just 1.3 volts. So that is it from me today guys, please let me know what you think of this board in the comments. Thanks for your continued support, hope you enjoyed today's video, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.